One of the great joys I have in my role at the farm is that I get to show people around and to give them a tour and I get a chance to tell stories and just infuse about this wonderful place. So what I'd like to do is give you a bit of a virtual tour. I videoed this, it'll take two or three different films otherwise it'll be too long but I just wanted you to get a chance to sort of see it in its context. So the next few minutes will be the first part and then we'll do another one in a few days time. At the beginning you'll see some building materials on the floor it's because we're not being lazy and not tidying up it's just that we've got a lot of building work going on at the moment working on uh, the kitchen that's going to be for the cafe when we eventually get that far so here we go enjoy the tour here we are right by the rose garden with the hay store over on the right hand side there that planter right in front of us the galvanized steel thing was left when we first took over the farm we probably used for some kind of water trough but we've used it for planting out going through the doorway here into one of the old parts of the farm past what's going to be the bakery and some new toilets eventually work under progress this is the courtyard which has been transformed over recent years absolute sun trap beautiful place to sit and have your tea at tea time this wall here needs a bit of work it needs to have the pointing done same as some of the others have done but that's another job for the future through the gate now out to the entrance area the car park the front gate and as we start walking towards the sensory garden and the rest of the farm we go past a sign this sign's only been up for about a year or so and it was it was really helpful because people used to drive in and ask us all sorts of things thinking we were just a normal farm or we were a farm shop selling veg so through the entrance to the sensory garden there's been a lot of videos already on the sensory garden so i won't go into too much detail but this is really just a chance for you to enjoy a walk through as if you were just enjoying the time out obviously this is just going for it we're walking at a bit of a, a pace going along when we do the tour normally you get a chance to stop look at things take in the smells discuss little stories and stuff which we won't have time today so past russell's retreat or russell's rest past carol and bert's benches and the boat orchard on the right hand side which we'll go through in a minute and then coming back over the gravel towards the rubber mulch lovely bit of planting out here lots of nice colors and very soothing and then opening up onto the alpine garden a oh, bit of a wobble there must have missed my footing to the pond and the bridge the white garden ahead across the astro turf and now back to the yellow brick road oh sorry the red brick road And now into Narnia through the wardrobe. Mind your head. Okay, now into, oh, there goes Woody running ahead there. My wife taking him for a walk. So we've got about 17 apples, pears, and plum trees growing in the orchard this lovely path curved pathway going through the middle and the grass is just getting quite long there's a lot of weeds and a few wild flowers in there we're trying to make it more of a wild flower area past the bench on the right that was to remember mark smith who tragically died a year or so ago the brambles on the right hand side are a picture of what this place used to be like it was before we took over it was just nothing but brambles everywhere um, the gate that you can see down the far end used to be the main gate into the farm before all these houses on the right were, were built uh, the farm used to be 120 acres and it's now 13 but we don't mind that 
it's a, a really good size for us. So just stop in this field and look at the alpacas. We've just moved the alpacas actually into another field, but I'll show you that on another video sometime. So now back down towards the gate and you think, where are we going now? But all of a sudden we turn left into the woodland walk. Now when I take people along here, normally they go, oh, that's so lovely. I've quickly shown that, the, the sign on the right hand side. I, we like to have signs around um, and they're really good for building up people. Um, it's, it's great just to give people something else to look at as you're going along. It, it takes them by surprise and reinforces good positive messages. So these woods were impassable when we first took over. There were branches coming out at every angle and uh, now it's a lovely walkway. Volunteers are not paid, not because they are worthless, but because they are priceless. It's another one of our signs up on the tree. Past the hedgehog house on the left there and the fencing on the right hand side, all that wood over there has all been done from the branches that we've cut down. The flowers down here are dying out now so we had uh, bluebells and daffodils and tulips and wild garlic. Um, it's a great little walk and really relaxing. When it's very hot, like the day that I filmed this, it's quite cool and refreshing to walk through there. And if it's a bit dreary and uh, cold, then actually it gives you a little bit of shelter as well from the rain and whatever. It's a, it's a nearly all year round, this is a good walk. And it gives us a job to do as well. There's the woodland maintenance, which is nice. We built this little fence here to stop people going too far and going into the little stream that's at the end. Um, at the moment, it really is a little stream because there's been no rain for so long that it's almost completely dried up. There is a little trickle that goes along there, but not much at the moment. So now we come out of the woodland walk. We've got the alpaca field on the left, freshly mown and very short grass because that's what they do. They eat grass right down, brilliant lawnmowers, like the donkeys. Those steps, you'll see that from another angle in a little while. And then this was a story, this bridge years ago had help from the DWP on a day. It was an epic day where a group of people were on one side of the water and a few others were on the other side of the water and we just started hacking through brambles and bracken and trees and all sorts of things. Didn't even know that we were in the right place until we could see each other. And eventually, after one amazing day, we made it clear so we could actually see where the bridge needed to go. And then we built a bridge later on. So that's the stream carrying on. The fence on the left-hand side protects the reservoir, which is a balancing pond. It's beautiful, beautiful asset, again, You've probably seen a couple of the videos that I've done on the pond and the bird life that we have. But it's uh, it's protected. It's got a fence all the way around it, so we don't go in there. And it's run by Essex and Suffolk Water, and uh, they have it as a balancing pond. So water from the estate run through pipes and feed into that, say blocking up the drains, and then it feeds back out through a sluice when it gets to a certain depth. So... Thank you, Jakey, for mowing the pathways the other day. We've got a few little figure of eights, so you can go for a little stroll around. This is a nice place. I think eventually this will be a nice place for picnics. It's uh, slightly close to Yarmouth Road, so you do get a bit of the tr noise from the traffic. But it's actually, these trees we're just walking past now, they're ancient plum trees. Beautiful, beautiful plums. Very sweet, very small. And then we've planted a number of little trees so this is going to be a coppice planted about 300 trees so far uh, you can just see the stick there on the left hand side marking one or two of them so uh, we, again a bit of maintenance we don't get a lot of we've got no water down here so it's difficult to water them but they're still surviving they're doing okay oh there's woody again 
Come on, boy. Come on, Woody. Good trick if you can get a dog to run in slow motion. <laughs>